All right, so this time we're going to do permutations with restrictions. I'm hoping this is going to be a quick video. Now, something we maybe didn't talk about, and really the key to the whole thing, is this. When considering permutations with restrictions, we deal with the restrictions first. So we're going to run through four examples here, and each time we're going to remember that. Consider the permutations with restrictions, deal with the restrictions first. One, how many arrangements of the word Darwin begin and end with a vowel? All right, so th this is one of those cases where drawing a little box method is going to help you out, but it's not the end of the game. All right, so I'm going to write arrangements is equal to. All right, so the first box has to have a vowel in it. So that's two there. Now, there's four more boxes. And then this last one has to have the other vowel in it because there's an A and an I. Okay, and the other boxes, well, there's going to be four, four, three, two, one. All right, now that I've draw, sort of drawn up my box method, I'm just going to sort of neaten this up a little bit. And I'm going to say that it's two times, um, I guess, four pick four, which is just four factorial, uh, times one. We get an answer there of 48. All right, let's look at our next question here. Using the digits 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 without repetition, how many odd four-digit numbers can you form? All right, so they have to be odd. So in order for them to be odd, let's do our little, our little box method again. All right, so first of all, they're four-digit numbers. Maybe I'll use like a line method instead of a box. Um, now, how many odd four-digit numbers? So the last digit there needs to be a 1, a 3, or a 5. So there's um, three options for that one. And now we need to consider the rest of the rest of these. So there's um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 digits in total. So I would, at first glance, I would think that you can write the number 5 in here as sort of there's five options there. But... I don't think it can be zero. And one of these odd numbers is sitting there. All right, so now that I know that one of the odd numbers is sitting there and this digit can't be zero, there are only one, two, three, four options available to me at that specific point. So I've used up two of my numbers here. I can use any of the rest uh, for, the, for the other two. So there were six digits in total. I've used two, so I can have four here. And then uh, I've used three now, there were six, so I can have three different ones there. So I say the answer is four times four times three times three, which is equal to 144. All right, so those were some restrictions. Let's look at ones where the items are grouped together, where Bob and Jill need to sit in a rowing boat next to each other. That seemed to be a classic one. Uh, let's see what questions we've got here that are, that are similar. All right, how many arrangements of the word equals are there if the vowels are kept together? Okay, so this is a, these are sort of a bit tricky, but the way to think about it is to think about the word equals. Uh, the three that are going to get grouped together, the E, the U, and the A, are going to get grouped together. So E, U, A becomes like a its own letter all to itself. So now I have, um, it's going to be equal to, so I'll just do E, U, A there. So that means that there's one letter, E, U, A, there's another letter Q, there's another letter L, and there's another letter S. And if I'm going to arrange four letters, um, that's going to be four factorial. So that's the arrangement of four letters. But one of the letters can be arranged in multiple ways. EUA could be EUA, it could be EAU, it could be um, AUE, AEU. It can be arranged in three factorial ways because there's three items and I'm going to arrange all of them. Okay, so uh, four factorial times three factorial is going to give me some answer. Uh, 144 is the answer and I've put in the little textbook explanation 
of how they've described how they do that sort of question as well. So if I didn't make a lot of sense there, you can you can read through that one as well. This next question here really kicks it up a notch. It says, how many ways can two chemistry, four physics, and five biology books be arranged on a shelf if the books of each subject are kept together? So let's look at the books first of all. Two chemistry books, there's four physics books, and there's five biology books. And I've put them in their little brackets here because I'm treating them as, as single units. Right, so the way that so I've got three objects there. So the way to arrange three objects is um, just two, three factorial. Sorry, which is six. So let's let's write in our arrangements. Arrangements is equal to. So the ways to to do these three blocks, is three factorial. But then we could put the chemistry books this way or that way, right? So the arrangements of two objects is two factorial, which is just two. Um, the physics textbooks can be arranged in, in a lot of different ways, uh, four factorial ways. And finally, the biology textbooks can be arranged in five factorial ways. All right, so I've just sort of made some notes here for you while I was doing that. So. The ways that these three blocks can be arranged is three factorial. The ways that the first block can be arranged is two factorial. The ways the second block can be arranged is four factorial. And the ways that the third block can be arranged is five factorial, um, which is a large number. That's uh, 34,560. All right, so this has been uh, permutations with some sort of restrictions. The best thing that you can do is consider your restrictions first.